Hello everyone, and welcome back to Games in the Attic. I'm your host, The Tominator, and thanks for tuning in. On this show, I like to pick a random game from the attic, well, the attic, and see whether or not it deserves to stay. And on this episode, I'm gonna be taking a look at Dragonheart, Fire and Steel for the PlayStation. Let's get into it. Dragonheart, Fire and Steel is based off the 1996 movie, Dragonheart. It's a timeless tale about how Professor Lupin and Lucius Malfoy go around pranking people by shooting their blind fathers in the chest with an arrow. You know, that old medieval chestnut. And the only person who can stop them is a brave knight called Sir Dennis Quaid, with some help from a dragon possessed by Sean Connery. It's an absolute mess, but I didn't mind it as a kid. And that's who this PG rated movie was for, kids. So how did the game turn out? Oh my God! It's a 2D hack and slash that Acclaim thought would work best Mortal Kombat style. No blood code required here though. Developed by Funcom, the folks that bought you Pocahontas and A Dinosaur's Tale, bring us another light-hearted adventure that has us take control of Sir Dennis Quaid. The game got trashed by critics at the time, with Games Master giving it a 10 out of 100, saying, five minutes of this painful tedium and you'll never touch it again, ever, I promise. Everyone's a critic. And I get what they're saying, there are some kinks. Like here for instance, I need to jump on that bank to progress, but the soldier is standing at the edge. Surely the game wouldn't make it impossible for me to, oh wait, no it would. What am I supposed to do here? Water means death, at least so far it has. So now I'm forced into taking a leap of faith, a classic shitty game tradition. Okay, here I go, wish me luck. Wait, it's barely as deep as Sequade's ankles? Then why the fuck did I drown to death two jumps ago? One of the most annoying things in all of gaming is the you're low on health sound. Like, I get it. Could you just shut the fuck up while I figure my shit out? Well, in Dragonheart, it has something similar. See, it has a stamina bar, which is a very cool mechanic and functions much like the Souls games. And if it's green, you can perform heavier attacks, which deal more damage. Amazing. But every time your stamina slightly goes into the red, that's when the heartbeat sound kicks in and takes over the entire game. And you're always low on stamina, so your heartbeat hardly ever shuts up. So Dennis feels like you're playing Mortal Kombat, which would be fine if you were playing Mortal Kombat, but in a hack and slash platformer, it just feels cumbersome and it takes a lot of getting used to before you're okay with it. The jumping, however, always remains shitty and there should have never been a boss that requires you to jump around column to column. Also, having the triangle button set to jump feels so unnatural and never quite sinks in. I swear, every time I wanted to jump, I had to think, oh, I need to jump, uh, um, uh, oh yeah, it's triangle. All that being said, I actually kinda like this game. Now, I'm not in no way saying this is a hidden gem, but the combat isn't that bad. You just have to take it slow and make sure to block and attack at the right times. Each level at least tries to set itself apart from the last. Okay, the enemies and gameplay stay pretty much the same, but it feels like some thought went into them. Same with the first few bosses. All are pretty varied and feel rewarding to beat. I'm not saying you're not gonna die over and over again, but at least the game gives you a chance. You get regular health pickups, this dragon horn thing that summons a dragon to clear all on-screen enemies, which isn't as good as it sounds and doesn't last for the entire game, but still, you get a password after every stage, as well as a shop where you can stock up on items and lives. It's not that bad, there's actually a game here. A truly shitty game will be so poorly made that it's almost impossible to progress. Bosses will have attacks that you can't dodge, and the game just won't make sense or be fun to play. Okay, I struggled on the first boss, and I wanted to throw the game at the wall, but all it came down to was blocking and striking at the right times. Once you get used to the jank, it starts becoming, dare I say it, fun. If you're looking for an unknown horror-themed hack and slash for the PlayStation, this is definitely worth a try. I, I'm, I know I'm kind of sticking my neck out here, but I don't think it's that bad. The skeleton soldiers in the crypt sound like trees falling over when they die. It's gotta be worth something, hasn't it? Also, the soundtrack is fucking Oscar winning. I mean, listen to this.
One move you have to know though is the finishing move, which is up, forward and circle. This move can sometimes kill regular enemies in one hit, and it takes huge chunks out of the bosses. Four or five hits on most bosses and they're dead. There's also these weird bonus stages where you're riding on a dragon and have to press the right direction to continue. I wasn't very good at them. My biggest problem with the game is towards the end. There's no more cool bosses to fight, just soldier after soldier, and I just got bored because all you have to do is crouch walk and slash at their ankles. It all just feels tacked on to make the game longer. And the final boss is also a big pile of bollocks. The first part, you have to just knock him off the ledge, but the second part had me stumped for about an hour. He stops taking damage when you get him to about a quarter health, and the only way I was able to get past him was to use the whirlwind attack, which knocks him down, giving me a split second to jump over, where I discovered the dragon. So whatever, I just thought he was part of the background. I get the boss down to a quarter health again and hack and slashed until I'd worn out the flesh on my thumbs. Nothing happened. Then I ran out of stamina and he killed me. Luckily, I had an extra life. Whirlwind attacked him once more and out of pure desperation, I take a swing at the dragon in the background that has no health bar or shows any signs it can be damaged and I complete the game. Now I know this is what happens in the movie because Professor Lupin and the dragon share a heart or whatever, but give us a sign or something. They did it with the previous bosses. Why couldn't they make this dragon flash for fuck's sake? Ah, <sighs> but apart from that, this game is actually okay. I wanted to point and laugh at it, honest I did. But what I actually ended up thinking was, <laughs> this game's pretty cool. As for giving it a rating, it's somewhere in between Hidden Gem and Dennis Quaid's Irish accent. No one ever found victory in the dirt.